Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2 CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what the dig team's excavated for the second week of our show. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. First up, we have another dig from Matthew Belshin, DOS Games backslash arcade backslash CBOB. Okay, I already got a funny feeling I know what this is. Um, actually, judging from those files there, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what I think it is. Share where notice, Christian... Wait, I... I have to wait 30 seconds for this thing? Okay, there it goes. CB Software. Construction Bob in the bouncing fact. Yeah, this is exactly what I thought it would be. Um, I haven't covered this on Ancient DOS games. This is basically, it's kind of like Breakout. Um, <laughs> yeah, it actually has um, sort of blood effects on the PG setting. I don't know if you'd call that PG, but I don't know. Control type. Um, We'll go with the shift keys, because why not? And play. Make three trees. Fair enough. I... Okay, I need to turn the cycles down. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. But yeah, that's basically all there is to it, is you just have to bounce Bob around here and not get people killed. The controls are extraordinarily floaty. And the idea is the longer you keep him bouncing for, the higher he'll go. But when you start bouncing him at strange angles, he can go like all over the place. And yeah, there's some really bizarre effects with, you know, getting killed and everything. This game is just weird. And yeah, I know it looks like I'm doing really freaking bad, but you have no idea how floaty the controls are. You can, if you like push the shift key, you barely move at all. But if you hold it down, you suddenly accelerate into huge movement. And the other thing too is once you have acceleration in one particular direction, you can't actually, um, you can't move in the other direction until your acceleration in one direction disappears. So if you start moving really fast to the right, or yeah, if you start moving really fast to the right, I'm holding left there, and you, as you saw, it didn't go back left until it finished going right. Yeah, I was holding left the entire time I overshot that. Yeah, it's an interesting idea for a game for sure, but it's really freaking hard to control. Next up from Brendan of Retro Swim, we've got Win Games backslash Advent, which stands for Adventure, backslash NCC1701. Okay, so here's our first Windows game. Um, let's quickly take a look at the README file. It's a faithful adaptation of the mainframe classic. Okay, so this is going to be... I don't know if any, how many people know about this, probably a lot of you, but there was this Star Trek game that was originally created for mainframe computers that involved like warping to sectors and stuff, and it's been cloned like dozens of times. And so this is looking like it's probably gonna be one of those clones. I'll register if I like it. When is he asking for a $20 fee? Captain, your orders are destroy the 16 Klingon warships which have invaded the galaxy before they can attack Federation headquarters and start at 2930. 2930? Seriously? This gives you 30 star dates. There is one star base in the galaxy for your resupplying your ship. Uh, mission. Actually, what happens if I hit mission declined? Starfleet regrets your decision. The Federation will be conquered. There were 16. <laughs> The Federation requires a new captain for a similar mission. If there is a volunteer, let him step forward now. And I'm still have mission accepted, mission declined. And it just quit me out. <laughs> so basically, that was a let's not start the game button. Okay, I'll accept your stupid mission. So, yeah, this is looking pretty much like one of those things. Um, mission status report. 
Oh, the missions are randomly generated, because now there's 24 Klingons instead of 16. Jeez, maybe I should have done the first one. Now this is kind of... I mean, I understand why it's look, looking like this. The original way this was done was there'd be three digits. The first digit would represent, um, I believe, the number of Klingons present. The second digit would be like star bases or something, and the third digit would be the number of stars in the sector. But because this person hadn't apparently heard of tacking zeros onto your numbers, these eights are probably like this eight here is probably supposed to look like zero zero eight. So there's a Klingon here and a Klingon here. So let's navigate. Yep. It keeps beeping at me for some reason. Um, shields. Probably want some shield energy going on, so let's say... Oh, 500. Ray shields. Okay, shields are up. That's our target, it looks like. Oh, well, let's just use 200 energy. Okay. Let's do another 200 shot. And yeah, the beeping that's happening is either because I'm pushing something it doesn't like, or it's showing a message at the top here. Unit hit. And it's gone. So yeah, see how the one zero disappeared, even though technically it should still be like zero zero five? Okay, so we've got a middle number right here that a, says a one on it. I'm gonna guess that that's the star base. Course two, warp factor one. Oh, and there ha is a Klingon here, too. But yeah, that's the Starbase. That's what I guessed. So the numbers follow the original conventions and everything. Actually, something I noticed just now is that the tor torpedo stuff actually shows the course of the enemy right here. And in a decimal value. So you could actually use a decimal value to hit the targets that way. Which is kind of neat. This game's not bad. Very basic. Very simple. I do like that all the different sectors have names to them, but... This could have had a little more... Well, for twenty dollar for twenty dollars back when when was this made? Ninety two for twenty dollars back in ninety two. This is a bit too simple, but it's not bad. Our last dig for today comes from Robert Mackey and his DOS games backslash arcade backslash EGA Roid. Okay, I'm not quite sure what this is going to be. Oh, well, just one file, EGA Roids. Probably nothing to do with steroids. Actually, there's a high score file. Liner Software represents EGA Roids. 1988 is the copyright here. My source code is also available. That's actually something a lot of these independents did, is actually offer the source code for much larger amounts. I'm not entirely certain on the reasoning. Anywho, um, controls, probably an important thing. Left Shift, Alt, Caps Lock. Right shift Okay. <laughs> okay, we have like the worst controls ever right here. <laughs> Spacebar to start the game. Um Yeah, it's gonna take a little to get used to these controls. Oh, I see why they're using caps lock. It, it you turn caps lock on and accelerates you, you turn caps lock off, it stops accelerating you. There's the hyperspace. Ah. Like, I mean, I understand why they use these keys specifically, but... I explained it before in a more recent um, Ancient DOS Games video, is that... There's no easy way to constantly read the state of keys on the keyboard in DOS, so you have to write your own keyboard handler to do that. But most people trying to get into making games didn't know really how to do that. So one of your options was to use the shift keys, because you could read their states very easily with just a single assembler command, and it wouldn't be completely butchered by the, by the keyboard buffer that's normally used for handling typing. One thing I have to say about this game is that it doesn't look too bad until you realize it's a game advertising the fact that it's using EGA graphics, and yet so far the graphics have been entirely monochrome. Yeah, we're back to mo still doing monochrome colors here. But that's it? You die, you go back to the title screen. 
Apparently the high score is 159,120 points. How many points did I even have? You get 80 points for shooting an asteroid. How did anybody get 150? You know, it's probably stored as like plain text. In fact, let's go check. High score, type high score. Okay, it's not stored as plain text. <laughs> but <laughs> with at only 12 bytes big, I can't imagine it's hard to hack that high score file. But yeah, that wasn't that was actually no, that was that was pretty bad. <laughs>